So this is part of the, uh, the numerical methods in electromagnetism. And uh, we talk about one of this, met this methods is a finite difference time domain method. And today we will talk, we will see the part one. This is the outline of this presentation, the introduction, then we see the finite difference, and then the fundamentals of the FDTD method. This is an example of three main 3D methods that are used in computational electromagnetics. There is a method of moment. The method of moment is based on uh, integral equation. And to resolve this integral equation, uh, we need to uh, in, uh, inverse matrices. And uh, with this method, when the structure become complex, for example, you have uh, different kind of uh, dielectrics or different uh, kind of material, uh, the matrices uh, size increases. So this increases the uh, simulation time and increases the uh, resolution of the problem. Another technique is uh, transmission line method, TLM. This is based on uh, the analogy between uh, Helmholtz equation, which resolve voltage and current uh, with the Maxwell equation, which resolve electric field and magnetic field. And then we have the finite difference time domain method, which is the subject of this uh, talk. And the FDTD is based on a discretization of Maxwell equation in space and in time. This is a historical background. Uh, KE uh, proposed an algorithm in 1966 uh, that is still used uh, nowadays for the FDTD. And the first time that the FDTD algorithm was used uh, was in 1975 by Alan Tavlov, and he applied it to resolve uh, uh, the, the effect, uh, to, to actually to, uh, to analyze the effect of radiation on uh, human eyes. And uh, since this period, the, the FDTD uh, grew very fast and it is now very mature. Today, it is used in many applications, uh, such as radiation problem, antenna problem, uh, microwave secrets, the electrochemical absorption in human tissues, and also in optics. So the, each uh, method has its advantages and disadvantages. If we if the TD had only advantages, then we will not use the other methods. So has the same like the same like the other methods LTD has advantages and disadvantages the advantages of LTD are the following one the following ones so the concept is simple as you will see uh, the algorithm does not require the formulation of integral equation and relatively complex squatters can be treated without invasion of large matrices it is simple to implement for complicated inner managers conducting, conducting or dielectric structures uh, because constitutive parameters can be assigned to each lattice point. Its computer memory requirement is not prohibitive for many complex structures of interest. The algorithm makes use of the memory in a simple sequential order. And also the last one is it is much easier to obtain the uh, um, frequency domain data from time domain result than the inverse. Uh, it is more convenient to obtain frequency domain result via, via time domain when many frequencies are involved. For example, you just send this pulse frequency uh, 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 pulse, and a pulse in frequency domain will be very large frequency band. And if you use a frequency domain technique, you have to, to simulate at uh, different frequencies, so simulation time will be much larger than using a time domain technique, with uh, which will give you the result uh, in a large frequency uh, event. Uh, I didn't ask, usually I ask if there is a, uh, if uh, so some people has uh, already uh, experience in FDTD. Uh, do anyone has already experience in FDTD? No, no, I don't have any experience. Okay, okay, good. that's good, that's good. What we will see, uh, in this class is really the fundamentals and uh, I hope you will uh, like this uh, 
domain and uh, and maybe you will uh, continue to work on it with on it and, yes i will yes i will thank you very much and uh, um i have a student working in mdtd with uh, moving uh, bodies and uh, we we already published one year several papers and he submitted several papers so this is a, a, a like a, like a, we can do, we can do new uh, subject new research uh, activities with this method we know that we have commercial softwares with commercial softwares you don't do any proof of coding you don't need a proof of commission and uh, you, of course you can do conception you can uh, you can uh, design uh, structures antenna devices etc but if you know yourself a numerical technique then you can uh, work on new subject and maybe you can develop new uh, uh, new codes a new uh, theoretical uh, 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 new theory about uh, uh, computational electromagnetics that's what, what what we want to work on so in my research group we're not focused only on the design we do the design but also we work on uh, um, uh, theoretical electromagnetics and uh, numerical techniques this is important to 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 to, to work on this different subject this uh, are these are the disadvantages of LDTD methods so the main ones its implementation is test the modeling object as well its surrounding for example you have uh, I will take the example of an antenna and the and you have the metallic maybe the antenna is made of metal so you have to discretize this this antenna and also at least some part of the air surrounding it. So we have to calculate the field in all each point on that surrounding. So the, the required program execution time may be excessive. Its accuracy is at least one order of magnitude worse than the, the method of moment. For example, with the same uh, uh, the same uh, 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 space mesh and since the computational mesh are rectangular in, in shape they do not conform the scattered scattered with curved surfaces as it is the case in the cylindrical or spherical boundary its computer memory requirement it's not prohibitive for many complex structure of intents um, I think that second one it was one of the advantages I just repeated here so that this advantage is only the first sentence and and has in all finite different difference algorithm the field quantities are only knows uh, only known and grid nodes so we have grids we know at the, the nodes what's the field but we don't know uh, in between so now we will talk about the finite difference it is really the basis of the everything method We start a function of f of x, as we see here. So this is x, f of x, and we plot the function here. And at a different point, x. So usually I call this x0, but I, I heard that it should be called x0. So x0, x0 plus delta x, x0 minus delta x. So at this point, you have the value of f of x. And you can you can use a Taylor series to develop the value of f of x plus delta x. It will be f of x zero because delta x is small. Plus delta x f prime is, uh, x zero, so it's a first derivative of the function f of uh, x zero at x zero. Uh, one over two factorial delta x square. F seconds is the second derivative of the function at the point x naught, etc. So that's the Taylor series of the function at the point x x naught plus delta x. And we do the same at x zero minus delta x. So we have this two relation. So before giving this uh, this result here. One thing we can see if if we do this equation plus this equation, we will have here actually this equation this equation we will cancel the first derivative. So it's better if we use uh, actually if we use 
only this equation. We put the fx x naught on the other side, and uh, we put the other one here on the other side, and we can we can neglect the higher order because delta x is small. So the more the order, the more the, the power here is, is high, the more that uh, component is small. So we can neglect higher uh, orders. So if we put that on the other side, we can have an approximation of this first derivative. The same thing for with this equation. We put the fx naught on the other side. We can have an approximation of the first derivative. If we do uh, this one plus this one, we can have an approximation of the second derivative. And that's what I wrote here. If we use the first equation, so we, we're going to have fx0 naught plus delta x minus fx naught divided by delta x. And that can be an approximation of the first derivative at the point x naught. The other terms, they will be order of delta x. Okay. They will start with delta x, et cetera. And then it x and the other one. So the, the error we can say it's the order of delta x. If we use the second equation, we have this equation: uh, f x not minus f x not uh, minus delta x divided by delta x. That's also an approximation of the first derivative at x not. This one we we see here we use the po the point x not plus delta x, so that one, and the point at x not, this one. Because we use after the point x not, we call this one, this one the forward difference. So we can use this technique to have a first, to have an approximation of the of the derivative to, of the uh, of the first derivative at x not. And that's that straight line we see here. So this one can give us an approximation of the first uh, derivative at this point. If we use the, the second equation here, we are using this point x not minus delta x and x not. This one will is called backward difference. So forward difference, backward difference. If we use the two the two equation and we do that one minus that one. We can also have an, an, an approximation of this, uh, the first derivative. It will be like this, fx naught plus delta x minus fx naught minus delta x. So we will use this point and this point, divide by two delta x. You can do this as an exercise. It's, it's not difficult. If you do this minus delta x, you, you will have two delta x. So that's why you, you're going to have the two delta x here. And what you will see here, the order, that's something you can also do at an exercise. Uh, if you do that, this minus this, and then uh, um, you're gonna have, you're gonna have, you know, this one will cancel, you see, because it's the same value. And this one will not cancel. When you divide by delta x, it, you will have here the order of two. So this is why the error will be, we, we, is going to be with the error of two. Okay. That uh, equation here is called central difference. So we are using the point after and the point before. That's central difference. Which one is more accurate? This one is more accurate because the order is higher. We could we, we could do another equation more complex with higher order, three or four or etc. And then we will have more accurate result. So this uh, technique here is more accurate than the backward difference or forward difference. So for some problem, for example, if x0, x0 here is the first point and we don't have x0, uh, x0 minus delta x, then we have no choice to use, for example, forward difference. But most of the time we have the two points here and we can use the central difference. So central difference for the first derivative is given by this equation. We're going to use it after. Um, if we use now, um, this equation plus this equation, the first derivative here will be cancelled. 
and then you have you start here with the second derivative and you will get this equation here so fx naught plus delta x minus 2fx naught plus f of x naught minus delta x divided by delta x squared and you can see that the order of the error here will be 2 so the error of order 2 actually i think we're going to use this equation let me check it so probably we use this or this one really. yeah we have to use the second value so i may ask you to write this uh, in a paper yeah, please so the second derivative here yeah. so please write this one So that's an approximation of the second derivative at the point x0. Okay, let's say we wrote it. And uh, suppose we want to apply this finite difference to resolve uh, uh, the 1D wave equation. It's a scalar wave equation here. So phi here is a scalar. And uh, C is a speed of propagation. X uh, and X, uh, X is, is, is a, a space and uh, T is time. So that's uh, hyperbolic, hyperbolic uh, partial differential equation. And uh, to, resolve, to resolve this using finite difference, first we're going to do discretization. So instead of X here, we will write it as I delta X. And T is going to be j delta t and we will have to we want to resolve the equation in terms of i and g so what we want to write is phi at the point i so any point i from 0 to 1 to etc and uh, at the time j plus 1 so at the time uh, uh, at the uh, updated time and here we, uh, we should have all uh, we should have a, a formula uh, which is from which are function of phi at different points but it should be calculated pre, uh, before j plus one so maybe j j minus one etc so at previous time so this equation is is called a update equation of the function phi at the point i so by using this formula here. I will give you uh, a few minutes to try to, to resolve this equation. This is really a good exercise. So you have to, to use this because here we have a second derivative. You have a second derivative with uh, space. You have a second derivative with time. Of course, here because we are using this discretization. Uh, sorry. Instead of having here, so you you're going to have to you have the function will be function of um, i and j, and here will be for example i plus one. This one will be i. This one i minus one. If you derive with in space, and j j will change will not change. If now you derive with time. You will have j, j plus one, uh, j and j minus one, and you will have, here you will have delta t squared. So you use this formula for the two equation, the two second derivative, this one and this one, and uh, then you will uh, uh, resolving this equation will give you this.
Okay, let me let me go to the next slide. So it, it's okay if you didn't finish. It's just to show uh, what kind of uh, exercise we have to do in the beginning to understand the fin difference. So you, you see the principle is not difficult, but you just have to maybe do some exercise in the beginning to, uh, to, uh, to, to get use of it. So what we do, we, we replace the previous equation here, this one. We use a discretization that we see here, and we use that equation that we see here, central difference for the second derivative. And uh, from that, we got the uh, this equation. So uh, this relation here and this relation here. And we can use this, this simplification. So this change of variable r equals c delta t over delta x squared. From that, we will take anything that is in the future time. So like a j plus one, that's a future time will be on the right on the left side of the, of the equation and anything that is from the past or the present present or past here will be on the other side so with this equation if i know the phi, the, the, the function phi at any point i and uh, presently so it means j at this time and the previous time j is minus one then i can know what will be the function uh, phi at the next time, at this point i. That's what this equation tells. I can represent this equation uh, like this. And uh, this point here, we see with the circle, it's what we see in the left. So at this point, j, uh, j plus one, position i, we have to use what we see the squared with the square, we have to use these three points in the computational model. Um, let me come back here. Suppose I don't use uh, the error of order two, I use a higher order. Like, a, I don't know which one is the next one, maybe four. Um, then if I do that, then this equation will be more complex and we will have to use more points. Okay. The, uh, the, this wave equation can actually be resolved uh, analytically. And uh, let's suppose, let's take for example, for simplicity C equal one and X is uh, between zero and one. And uh, then we have to use, uh, we, we need a boundary condition so what is the value at x equals zero and at x one? We suppose it is zero. And we also need an initial condition. Uh, actually, we need here two initial conditions So that one. Uh, so at, the, at times uh, t equals zero, we need this. And we also need the uh, relation for the derivative. And uh, we say that the derivative equals zero at time t equals zero. And also we suppose that delta x equal delta t for simplicity. So in the finite difference, if we pull, if we have c equal one, um, uh, no, so if we have c equal one and delta x equal delta t, then we will have e here r equal one. So this one will cancel. This one will be one here. Um, yeah, so the question will be simpler, will be just the equation. Here. This equation that we see here actually is derived, is obtained by using this inequal, uh, initial condition here. So we know that at t equal one, we need to have this. And at t equal zero, actually it's, 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 uh, it's this one. So the analytical solution of the problem is given by this. So I, I don't need to, to show you how to resolve this. Uh, you, you probably did study this uh, uh, before. So the analytical solution is given by this. So phi of x uh, and t is equal to sinus px 
Cassini is PT. Uh, let's consider that the space mesh is 0 0.1. So the, uh, so the theta x and, and, and the time step is 0 0.1. And let's resolve the problem using MATLAB. So first we do FDTD. So how do we do FDTD? We take, we have the, here the uh, vector in time, so t from 0 to 1 with the delta, delta t equals 0 0.1 and x from 0 to 1 and delta x 0 0.1. We start with the matrix of the solution from one to 11 here and one to 11 with the first with zero. Then we have uh, uh, initial condition, sinus pi, uh, pi uh, x here. And then we have for x from one to, uh, to, uh, to uh, 11. And then this one is, uh, uh, this one is what? Yeah, this one is, is uh, is this one? Is the question here? So the y f d is the function phi obtained with the finite difference. And then here we have a loop in time. And the loop in time starts at j equal 2, and we go to 10. Uh, in this loop of time, here we have the boundary condition. So for x equal 1, for x equal 11, we say that's 0. And then we have, we continue uh, uh, the loop in the space. So from i equal two to ten, and you can see we, that equation. That's the equation of of that that one here of the function. Then you see the initial condition. We know that the initial condition, and then we see here in time the solution by using this the finite difference. So the boundary condition is zero and zero. You can imagine this is like a wave and with a metal here and a metal here. And uh, inside we're going to see oscillation. That's, you see the high value, the red value here is positive one here, maximum. And then it goes to zero and, and go, then to, uh, minus one. So you can see like an oscillation uh, uh, of a wave uh, inside of our kind of waveguide here. So that's the solution we got with the finite difference. If we use the exact solution, so we just use a formula here, cosinus px and cos, uh, sinus pen x and cosinus uh, pt, we got this result here. And now we can do a, a comparison between these two results. So this one is analytical solution. It is an exact solution. There is no any approximation here. We just have uh, uh, divide the space, of course, in in a, um, in a, uh, step uh, time step and the space mesh, but the solution are exact. It's, there is no any approximation here. Here there is an approximation. What is the approximation we use is this one. Let's come back here. We have used an approximation of the of the equation. It's not really the first the second derivative. It's not exact. So here that is based on an approximation. So we have to compare the finite difference, which is based on approximation, with the exact solution. If we compare them, uh, that's what we plot here. You can see that the maximum here is 10 minus 16, which is very low, which is very small. If we decrease delta x, we we, uh, we choose for for example delta x 0 0.1. But if we decrease it, which means we are decreasing the error because the error is a function of delta x square here. If we decrease uh, delta x, then the error will decrease. We will decrease too. The difference between the two here will decrease. So that's the, uh, the principle of the finite difference. Uh, do ha do you have any question? Uh, in the chat, I see. Oh, no, okay. Let me check the time. Okay, I propose a small break of uh, uh, 15 minutes and then we come back. So, at um,
237. So we have seen the finite difference, and now we will talk about the fundamental of the finite difference time domain method, which is of course based on finite difference. In an isotropic medium, Maxwell's equation can be written like this. The rotational of the electric field is equal to minus mu um, data t h over data t. E electric field, H magnetic field, mu is permeability of the medium. Rotational of H equal sigma E plus epsilon uh, um, delta E over delta T. Sigma is conductivity, epsilon is permittivity. Here we have Faraday's law, Faraday's equation, or Faraday's law, and here we have Ampere's law. In a rectangular Coordin uh, coordinate or uh, Cartesian coordinate, we can write these two equation here with the six uh, scalar equation. So now we don't have vectors, but only the components, uh, hx, hy, hz, ex, ay, z. So the components of the magnetic field and electric field. So in all this equation, they are partial differential equation that use uh, first derivative. You can see here, you have the first derivative with t, first derivative with z, first derivative is with y, etc. So if we use finite difference, we're going to use the um, finite difference equation that we have seen before for, for the first derivative. We start first by uh, uh, doing the discretization the same way we did before with the 1d one, one wave equation. So the, sp the space i, j, k will represent i delta x, j delta y, k, k delta z. And we add here n um, for the time. So n delta t will be the time t. Using the, the central difference, the first derivative of the x will be writing something like this. Uh, uh, here I uh, we see here this is this is just a convention but we will we will change it later instead of if I come back to to this function here what we call theta x is the distance here between x zero and this and, and this and the and the next point of the and and the same thing here here we have theta x but we can call theta x the total one. If we call delta x the total one, then of course here we're going to have um, delta x, and here we're going to have half, and here half. So you will see in uh, in the literature you will see, for example, the first derivative we will be will be high i plus half, i minus half here, and we have delta x instead of two delta x. The error is still delta x square. And here we have n plus half and n minus half. So the delta t is really the, 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 the time difference between the, 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 the two points here. So we really use the central difference. Okay. We use it for the space or for time. If I come back to the this six scalar equation, because here you have to do a derivation with time, here you have to do a derivation with z, here with y. And based on this equation you see here, this one, this one is at this is at position i j k, but you need to, to have solution i plus half here, i minus half. What does it mean? That means that uh, uh, the, the the h x component that will be calculated in this equation will be a not a not at the same position of the, this e y and this e z. 
and they will not be calculated at the same time because here you're going to have central difference. So you have to use minus half or plus half and minus half and plus half. The same thing for the other equation. If you look all of these components, uh, you see that you have to, to put them in one cell, you have to be a different position. And that's what we call the Yi cell. So Yi cell, that's the Yi algorithm. And the Yi algorithm, the space is discretized. We have NZ cell and NX cell and Y cell. That's a computational volume. And in one cell, we have to put the, 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 the position of the different components. They have to be uh, not the same position. So for example, here we have we, we have position for HX. Position for the, the, the EZ will be one here, one here, one next cell, and uh, EY one here, one here. So from here to here, that's one cell. That's one, uh, that's one uh, delta Z. From here to here, that's delta Y. And here, this is delta X. So the HX we calculate will not be, will be half space mesh position compared to the EZ and the same thing compared to EY. When you calculate HX in the previous equation, we see, we see here, HX here, you need the EY, which is that one and that one. And you need the EZ that is here and the EZ that is here. And the HX will be in, this, in the middle. So let's let's start with the first equation. So delta H, uh, delta HX over delta T equal one over, uh, min, uh, over U, delta EY over delta Z minus delta EZ over delta Y. So that's the solution here, but I want to show how the solution is obtained. So let me share, I have to stop share here. I have to use the tablet. So the first equation is delta hx over delta t equal one minus u delta ey over delta z minus delta ez over delta y. And we use the y cell for the different for the position, um, we we're going to have h x, and suppose the direction is toward us. So I could just put a point here, and we have e y here. We have here e y. Here this is uh, sorry this is one is not e y is e z. E z. This is EY and this is EY. This distance here is um, delta Z. And here from this to EZ, we have delta Y. So the coordinates is like this, Y and Z. And uh, that position, we should see this point that is here is going to be I, J, K. So that means that HX will be position I, uh, J plus half, and K plus half. So that one here will be HX at high, I, J plus half, K plus half. Okay. Then in, the, in this equation, we have derivative with time. This derivative with time will give us something like that, HX, 
and press hard. Because I don't have any space. Minus HX and minus R. And the same point here. And here we have the Tati. Now that will be for this one here. And then we do the same thing for the other ones. So we, we, uh, we have to be careful about the positions. So we know that this point here, uh, the IJK, and then we know what's the position of HX. We should know the position of the, of the different ones, the other ones. But if I come back, I close this. I come back to the presentation. So as I said, that's position uh, HS, it is, is at I, J plus half, K plus half. And then we put the future value for the H, 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 X at M plus half uh, on the right, the left side of the equation and the, all, everything else on the right side. So you see that this is calculated on the, on the previous time. Even this one is calculated on previous time because it's calculated at time M. So we have used this equation and we resolve this equation using central friendly difference. It gives us this equation, which we call the equation of update of HX. On n'a pas accès au partage d'écran. On a juste votre webcam. Oh, sorry. I should... Uh... Sorry about that. Let, let, let me repeat again. So uh, we put in the left side the HX calculated at n plus half, okay, and everything else on the right, uh, right side of the equation, because this one is calculated at previous time, n minus half. The same thing, this one, EY at n, and the other one at n here, you see here. And the position, this is uh, as I, I show how we, we get this position. So this equation is called update of HX. By using, resolving the first equation and using central uh, central uh, finite difference, we got the equation of update of HX. We can do that for the second equation for HY. So I will not show all the details how this equation is calculated. It's, it's exactly the same technique, but I can show how we get the position HY. So let me stop sharing here and uh, and I share again. Next one. Uh, HY, like this, EZ. Z here, EX, yeah, and the other EX here. So that means here we have Z and X for the axis, and the position of this point here is IJK. We can we can do that for the other ones. For example, um, ex ex will be like this. Um, Hz Position of ex based on e e cell is i i plus half j k and the axis here is z 
and uh, um, y. Z and Y. So we do that for the sixth equation. Um, it's a trick. And I will share again here. So the principle is, is not difficult to understand. Uh, but as an exercise, I, I suggest you to, to, to find the equation by yourself. You will start with this uh, um, partial differential equation, and then you use finite difference to get the different equation. So this one is a equation of a debt of hy. The next one is a debt of hz. And then you do you continue a debt of um, ex, ey, and ez. So let me come back. We just have resolved this six uh, scalar equation by using Cartesian coordinates. So all the equation with the delta t with the delta h over delta t, they're based on Faraday's law. And the other ones with um, delta e over delta t, based on Ampere's law. So just uh, to remind you, so in Maxwell equation, so this is based on the uh, experiment Faraday's have done. And uh, this one is uh, is uh, based on, it has a, if we have a, a current source, external constants, we can also add it here. We will see it, how, how we're going to do that. And this one actually is is uh, uh, a displacement current by added by uh, by Maxwell, and it becomes what we also can call the Maxwell Ampere's law actually because there is a term that Ampere's uh, Maxwell added. So we use this equation for the update of E and this equation for the update of H. On a toujours pas le partage des aussi cette fois. Oh, sorry. I forgot to click share. Yeah, yeah. So um, what I said is, so we do it for the sixth equation. And uh, so the sixth equation, I just want to come back here. There are the six equation we got by using Cartesian coordinates. And uh, we just use Faraday's equation and Ampere's equation, Ampere's law or Maxwell Ampere's law, because that term here was adding, has been added by Maxwell in uh, Ampere's theory. Um, and then we have this algorithm, so the Yi algorithm. In the Yi algorithm, first we defined the sp uh, spatial meshing and the time step. Then we have initialization. So remember, it's the same thing that has, we, we had in the in the one day web equation. We have to do uh, the initial condition, and also we have to define what's the uh, times uh, the special meshing and the time step. And then we have a time loop. We have a time loop here. So iteration with n n represent the time. We calculate the electric field at a certain uh, time uh, by, based on the electric field we got previously. The same thing for the magnetic field. We calculate it from the previous electric field and magnetic field. You can see there is half a time step uh, difference between the electric field component and magnetic field component. And then we here we in, we increase the time step, the time sorry the yeah the, the m. We, we we increment the time. And when we will stop, we will stop if we reach the certain number of iteration in time. And this uh, number of iteration can be fixed in the beginning. So uh, how do we fix it? If we, uh, if, if we found that then we found that the electric field or electromagnetic field is all absorbed by the by the, by the boundaries and you don't have any uh, electromagnetic fields, then you can stop the simulation there. Uh, or if you uh, reach a steady state, also you can fix the number of iteration based on this when you reach the steady state. And then it's a uh, algorithm is finished. Uh, here I want to talk about some programming aspect. So the different equation that we have seen here, we can be some, some can do some simplification by using this uh, change of variables or this parameter. And like this, we can, for example, here in this equation, we have only 
addition and subtraction. Uh, so this can uh, make the, uh, the resolution of the problems much simpler. You, we can fix this parameter in the, in the, in the beginning. And uh, like this parameter, they are fixed based on the delta T uh, and delta X, delta Y, Z. And this parameter, they are, they are function of the medium. So the conductivity of the medium, the unity of the medium, et cetera. So they can change uh, for each cell, we can fix what's the value for each for different cells. So that's what can we use here. M will be defining the uh, in a matrix. We can define for each cell what is the, the permittivity, the permeability, the co and conductivity. Um, so this we we have seen how the magnetic components will be writing differently. And other things I want to say in the in the in the programming aspect, of course, we don't have the plus half or minus half that we have seen here. Uh, we have to to use it in the beginning just to understand the principle. But after, of course, in the when you program that, uh, you will just say here it's one plus one and minus one instead. So here we have just plus one or minus one. Just as, as uh, that's more convenient for uh, programming. Um, yeah, another thing in the programming aspect, if we look to the computational volume, because the magnetic field component and the electric field component, they are not at the same position. Uh, for example, if you look this EX, that one here, it starts here at I, J, K in the Y axis. The last one will be I, um, this one is what i j plus one k. Imagine this one is the last one, and we don't have other ones. It means that you don't have another h z after here. So there is there is a limit on number of h z compared to the number of e x in the y axis, and you can see that for all the components. For example, h x can go from i from zero to i max. But in the y axis, it can go from from zero to j max minus one, and in z axis from zero to k max minus one. And for h y, you see here it can go in j from zero to j max, and etc. So we can see from e h z e x e y and e z, they don't have the same size, uh, in, in the same number of, uh, 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 how do we say. Um, same number of i or j or k in the different axes. They don't have the same uh, limits. This is an example of a loop. Uh, uh, this one, I think, is is a walking in Fortran, if I remember. Um, but of course, you can write in MATLAB or any other codes or, or, or other programming uh, language. Okay, so you, do you have any question about what we have seen up to now? So that's really the fundamental of LTTD that we, we started with, principles, and we have the different update equation, the algorithm, and the programming aspect. And now we will start uh, to do some analysis of this uh, technique. But before that, I want to ask if you if you have any question. So there is no question. So now we we'll talk about uh, some uh, analysis of so of characterization of this method, uh, the dispersion relation. So I have to show how this the, the, it is obtained. This one in, is in free space, and this one is is in FDTD. So I have to stop here and uh, use. So we need to use, uh, so we suppose that uh, we have a, a plane wave, so in free space. Uh, 
Oh, sorry for my whiting. It's not perfect when I white with this tool. Um, so it is u equal exponential minus g uh, j k x x like this plus k y y plus k z z and then plus omega t so that's a plane wave in free space then we use Helmholtz equation So how much equation is so this one is u so delta square u over delta x square plus delta square u over delta y square plus delta square u over delta z square is equal to one over c for the speed of propagation delta square u over delta t square so if we use this equation for u you see if you when you do the second derivative here you're gonna have kx square okay and u because it's exponential uh will stay so it's equal to and this one so and the other one will be ky square u plus k z square u equal uh, one over c omega square u so which means k x square plus k y square plus k z square equal omega square over c that's what we call the dispersion equation And this one is in free space. Okay, so I should do a new one. Okay, so that was uh, for free space. So now let's do it in um, FDT. What's what's do FDT? There is a discretization FDT, and we have also uh, we are also using a, a central difference. So it makes the the Helmholtz equation different for us. So in FDT, and uh, because we uh, we use J here for the uh, imaginary number, so we cannot use J. So we're going to use uh, uh, M Q. P and N. So in FDTD, in FDTD, the plane wave can be writing like this U equal P e minus. So we have, no, maybe we should not have confusion. This J is the imaginary number. And here we have KX. I put here a tilde just to say this is a numerical kx. It's different from the kx that we have seen before. Here we have m delta x because we have discretization and plus ky tilde and q here delta y and we have another one plus kz tilde. And this one I call P, P delta Z, okay, and plus omega N delta T. So that one will be the plane wave in FDTD. And uh, if we put that in the Helmholtz equation, so in Helmholtz equation we have second derivative, 
um, uh, of x, y, and z, and, and t. So if uh, I do it, for example, second derivative with, uh, with x, second derivative with x will give me something like that. u m plus 1 q p n minus 2 u uh, m um, Yeah, M Q P N and the next one is plus U M minus one Q P N. Over letter X square. So I do that uh, for all uh, the, the terms of the Helmholtz equation. So actually, this so this one, after simplification, you will get something like that. We get, you can put in factor, because we have exponentials there. You can put in factor u m q uh, p n over delta x square, and here we have something with exponential that actually can be simplified. Um, for example, if I just use it with the x, I don't put everything. I have here minus k, k um yeah well, actually in fact yeah i will just have the x term yes so kx here i will have uh, um m delta x no sorry there's no m just delta x plus another term here kx tilt and it's a plus here and I forgot the j, j here, delta x, uh, minus two. And this one actually is, uh, this one is uh, is sinus k, k x, delta x over two, and all of it is here is, is squared. So if we do that for all of them, um, we will get the result that I showed before. Let's stop sharing this one. No, I should not make mistake. Share. Okay, I'm sure that you can see now. So the, the one that I wrote, it was this term here. The second term is the same thing, but just with delta y. And we have here delta z. And here with the with the delta t. So this, this is really based on the Helmholtz equation. And uh, this equation actually is, or we call it the dispersion relation in the in FDTD. So that one I, I just also uh, I I, sh I have shown how to derive this one based on Helmholtz equation in his in free space. Um, if we analyze the speed of propagation here is c. Okay, it's, it's just omega over k is c. I think I forgot c square before in my equation. There is a c, c square. If we analyze now the uh, the speed of propagation or in in the FDTD, it will be more complex. The question will be something like that. So two over k tilde delta t. Here we have axinus of c delta t square root of u, and u is all of this here. So the the the, the numerical medium is dispersive. The propagation of the wave will vary with the frequency, and it will vary with the angle. Um, let's go to the next one. So based on that equation, if we take, for example, delta x, delta y, and delta z all the same, and we change a different angle of propagation, that's the speed of propagation is vp, and we divide by c. So ideally it should be one, but it is not one. Uh, um, but if we decrease the space mesh, so delta, when we decrease the space match, then we decrease this this uh, this effect. Of course, this effect is not very high. We have here zero point nine eight eight. This is very close to one, uh, but we can see. So depending also on the in the angle. So at certain angle, we can have more dispersion than other angles. The speed means the speed of propagation is different at the different angles due to the numerical dispersion. 
if we uh, take delta x and delta y as a different, like this example here, we can also have a different um, uh, expression of this, you know, different speed of vocation. So this is really a numerical effect, uh, but this is numerical effect, of course, can be uh, decreased uh, by decreasing the mesh. That's what we see, delta here. When we decrease the mesh, we, then the speed of vocation will be close to C. Much more close to this. So, uh, another characterization of this method is uh, accuracy. So, for for to have a good accuracy, we, we have seen before that the space mesh control the uh, accuracy. That's what we have seen uh, before. Uh, so, if we suppose delta here is delta x, delta y, delta z, the same, uh, we should use at least uh, less than uh, uh, the minimum wavelengths of the, the that we want to simulate, divide by 10. Okay. For example, we want to simulate a certain frequency band. We know what is the minimum wavelength. Then we take this wavelength and the delta should be smaller than that wavelength divided by 10. Uh, stability. So stability is also based on the dissipation relation. If we come back to this dissipation relation, which this equation here gives us the speed of propagation. The numerical speed of propagation. Now let's suppose that the square root here, or not this square root, sorry. Let's suppose that c delta t square root of u. So all of this, let's suppose it's more than one. So if more, if it is more than one, then this speed will be complex. And if this speed is complex, uh, you can you can show that in the uh, the plane wave, you're gonna have uh, an an, an an amplification, so the 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 J, the numerical num the the uh, imaginary number multiplied by another imaginary number will give you something negative, and then we have exponential uh, something uh, real, not an imaginary number, which is the negative, and that means the the wave will increase, the amplitude of the wave will increase. So this is why. If we want stability, we want we don't want to have instability. So the way of amplitude increasing is instability. If we want to have stability, we need so let's take the maximum that we can have for u. So the maximum we can have for u is if that, this sign is they are equal to one. You put that in this equation here, and you and you you want this c delta t square root of u should be smaller than one to keep stability. And the, this relation will give us this. So delta t should be smaller than that value. So the time step should be smaller than this. If we put, if we consider delta x, delta y, delta z all equal to delta, then the, the equation is, is much simpler. It's just delta over c square root of three. If we consider a 2D problem, in 2D problem, we have only x and y, for example. Then the relation will be something like that. Uh, for 1D problem, we will have delta t smaller than delta over c. And uh, what does it mean for 1D problem that actually is, is, uh, is easy to interpret? It means that the time step should be smaller than the time for the wave to, to go from one cell to the other cell. And that's that's logic. Okay, so we need time step to, 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 to satisfy this uh, relation in order to have uh, to respect the stability. Um, so we talk about uh, stability and accuracy. So now we talk about uh, the boundary condition. First, why we need a boundary condition? Suppose we this is a computational volume, what we see here. So inside the computational volume, we have this EZ, which is at, at the boundary, uh, HY, which is inside, and the hx here and hx here, they are, they are at the boundary. In order to update ez, we have seen before that we need the hy that is here and the hy that is here. But this hy is outside the computational volume. So that means we cannot use the equation uh, of, of that of ez that we've seen before. We have to do something special for this ez. We cannot use the, the previous equation because we don't have this hy. 
So we need to do something special for this EZ, and that's why we need some condition at the boundary. This is for EZ, which could be for also for uh, 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 for an edge component too. So there are different kind of boundary condition depending on, on the problem, uh, on, on problem that you want to resolve. Suppose we want to terminate with the metal, like a perfect electric conductor. That's, uh, for example, uh, um, yeah, there is many application where we, we, for example, waveguide. You, you have, we have to use a, a perfect electric conductor for the uh, for the boundaries. In order to modelize this, it is really easy. So we will finish here this boundary with with the E component, electrified component. So we have here EZ and EY. We just need to put this EZ and EY in the boundary to to be equal to zero. We just put EZ and EY equal to zero. That will satisfy the perfect electric conductor boundary condition. If we want to uh, modelize a perfect magnetic conductor, so which is uh, equivalent to the electric, but with for the magnetic. So what is the application of this? Let's suppose, for example, this is a microstrip line. In the my, uh, this is a microstrip line. This one is a coplanar line. There is a symmetry, axis of symmetry here, the plan of symmetry here. We can cut this structure. And we could cut this structure, and we we could use actually a perfect magnetic conductor. The solution we will get it will be the same than simulating the full structure here. So the perfect magnetic conductor can help to 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 resolve smaller uh, volume. Um, how we can we do that? It's easy. It's the same thing for the uh, perfect electric PEC, but for PMC we have to to set HZ. The HY and HZ here equal to zero. We have to terminate at the location of the magnetic field components, and we put them here equal to zero. We also can use absorbing boundary condition. Absorbing boundary condition is the same thing that uh, uh, in, uh, the absorber in and quick chamber. We don't want to have um, reflection. In PEC or PMC, you will have reflection of the wave if you send the wave to, to the PMC or the PEC. If we want to, for example, to, to modelize a problem with a, like a, it looks like a, in, in real world with a no reflection at, at, at boundaries or like a necroic chamber with the absorbing that will absorb all the uh, reflection, then we need to use some uh, different boundary condition. Um, here we'll talk about the absorbing condition IBC, but uh, it is not sufficient for all the problems. In the next uh, class, we will talk about PMF, perfect magnetic layers, which is more efficient for uh, many other many problems. But the uh, ABC is efficient if there is a, a if the if the wave is a plane wave, and it's only normal to the ABC, then it works very fine. There is no reflection. But if it's where, if we can have a reflection from any angle, then we don't use this absorbing condition. We use PML, the perfect match layers. Uh, but today we'll talk only about ABC. So the ABC, there is a one uh, specific ABC which is is a mu uh, from mu from a researcher called mu, and uh, and he's based on the finite difference on of the on one way wave equation, which is this one. At first order, this equation actually is an approximation. And at first order, this uh, we have this equation. In the next class, I will explain how this equation is derived. This is based on uh, analysis done by Enquist and Majda uh, for acoustic waves. And uh, they develop a theory, and uh, we, will, we, will, uh, we will see the details of this theory next time. Uh, and based on this theory, using the first order approximation, we got this equation. If this equation is used, we don't have uh, uh, propagation in two directions, just one direction. And if we use it at the boundary, then we will have the wave coming here will be no reflected. We will have no reflection uh, by using this ABC. That's works. It will work only if if the wave is normal to the so perpendicular to the ABC. Oh, so sorry, the plane is, is, is parallel actually to the to the so if um, 
the, the angle of incidence is, is, is normal to the, uh, to the ABC plane. So if we use the finite difference of this equation, then we got the equation that it is here. So at the boundary, so the EY and EZ, we'll use this equation based on the one-way wave equation in order to modelize the absorbing boundary condition. So next time I will explain how this equation, that one, that question, the one-way wave equation is derived. Um, we also not, need to do some, uh, um, so boundary condition, we have finished with the boundary condition for today, but uh, next time we will also talk, we will talk about the PML. Um, but now we have to talk about what happened bet uh, bet uh, at the NTFS between two media. So let's suppose we have medium one with the permittivity epsilon one and connectivity sigma one. And uh, we have a medium two. And the EX that you see, we see here, it is located at the boundary. So the, this EX need this HY, this HY, this HZ, and this HZ. I have to come back to the equation of update of EX, which is um, uh, this one. So here we see in this equation, we have the epsilon, we have sigma, and we need, we, we need to use this to hz and this to hy. But we don't know which s epsilon we're going to use, which sigma we're going to use, because it is a really, it is at the boundary. So which one, or of course, we, we, we're going to use this one or this one. We are going to maybe use, use a combination of both. But how are we going to combine? OK. So I will show, I have to just remember how the derivation is done. I have to use this equation. Uh, let me stop sharing here and share the tablet. And at the same time, I need to, to see here. So we have delta EX over delta T equal one over epsilon delta HZ over delta Y minus delta HY over delta z minus delta sigma ex. Uh, let's suppose we use a, 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 let me try to remember. So if you use backward difference, so backward difference, I think, if we do for example backward difference, if we use backward difference, then we're going to have delta x here, delta t. So let's suppose the backward is epsilon one, and etc. Here and we have here sigma one. And if we if we use forward difference, what we're going to have actually this epsilon here. I don't know how to delete this. Okay. Okay. I can put the epsilon one here. For what difference we have epsilon two here? Sigma ex versus delta t equal something here, and we have sigma two here. If I do the that first equation backward difference plus finite difference. And I divide by two, but actually this is equivalent to central difference. It's easy to show it. If, we, if you look back to the equation, we got for backward difference and the equation for forward difference. If you add them and you divide by two, you got central difference. In that case, you're going, you're going to have here epsilon one plus epsilon two 
over 2, etc., etc., and the same thing for sigma. Sigma 1 plus sigma 2 over 2. So I should stop this one. So stop sharing here. And I come back to the presentation. Okay, so this explains why at the interface we're going to use this epsilon one plus epsilon two over two, and same thing for sigma, sigma one plus sigma two over two. And uh, if we go to the question for the update of H, we can do the same thing that I have done. And uh, we found that the permeability at the interface should be like this. Okay. Um, let me remember this one, I think is called arithmetic mean. And this one is called, um, no, this one geometrical mean, and this one, I, I, I forgot, but uh, it's, you can see it's different. The question is different. So for permittivity, you have to do this. And for perme perme permeability, we have to do this one. Permittivity and, and uh, connectivity, we have to do yeah, this one. If we want to modelize a metal, a metallic object, uh, if it's perfect metallic object, we just have to put EX and EY in the metal. For example, this is a, a plate. And uh, when we simulate this plate, for example, we send a wave to this plate and we analyze the di diffraction, diffraction, sorry, or scratching of this uh, of this metallic plate. Uh, the result we got makes the uh, the size actually of the numerical metallic plates will look a little larger than the size that we use to, 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 to mesh it here. It's because the field that is here and the next field is it here is, is there is a um, like a due to the numerical metal we, we just know the field at the nodes here and uh, based on that the, the surface will always look a little small a larger so at least thirty percent of the cell here. If we want to to model, for example, um, uh, here, this, this is a circular patch. We can use what we call a staircase meshing. And this kind of looks like a, something circular. Uh, we will see in the next class how we can modelize with more details, actually using submesh technique to have a, a more accurate result for something that is circular form. Okay, I think this is the last slide. Okay, this is the last slide. Um, so we have shown the, the fundamental of the FDTD method. In the next classes, uh, we will see uh, more application and more characterization of this method and uh, more um, uh, um, other technique and features. Um, we have to know that there, there are other FDTD algorithms. For example, we can use a finite difference with the error of higher order. We can also use non-Cartesian grids, for example, cylindrical, spherical. We could also use non-uniform grids. But as long as you understand the, the you understand the classical one, the the the, 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 the basic of the ABTD, it is it's not difficult to understand or to to work on the other ones. So thank you very much. Uh, do we have any question? Oh, okay. So thank you very much. So let's see you. I will send the Zoom uh, invitation. Let's see you on uh, Tuesday, 12.30. And I will also send the invitation for Thursday, 12.32. Uh, I will send the... the the material presentation presentation of today, and the link also to the recorded video. Recorded video. Thank you very much, and see, see you see you next week. Thank you. Merci. Okay, thank you. Merci. Bye bye.